All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to my Fallout 4 Mod Spotlight series, where today we are having a look at a Vault 4 2, which is being made by user Ruan Han 2300. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a fun new Vault Tech based player home for you to enjoy. And it is a pretty nice little player home with quite a few bits of wonderful loot inside of it. Now, where you will find this glorious new house of yours is just right here in the Fairline Hill Estates south of the main Boston area. And uh, specifically, you're going to want to go to this house right here on the west, which has the Power Armor Station in it. And you'll find the entrance to this little Vault for Two just in the backyard. Now, as you can see, it requires a Vault Hatch Key to open. And this actually actually is a little bit interesting because you might think to yourself, oh, well, surely it's nearby. No, no, it is not. It is all the way back in Concord. And you know this because heading inside on the table, there is a note to my darling where one of the residents of this Vault 4 2 has headed to Concord, as you can see at the bottom of the note. And though it's written off, you can see speakeasy. So yes, you just need to head to the Concord speakeasy on that main road there, and on the second floor activate a skeleton which will give you the key. So pretty easy to find once you do actually see this note. It, um, it took me a while to notice that the note was there. And once you have the key, you can just come back and head right on in to the personal vault, apparently, which is Vault 42. And it is a personal vault built by these two well-off individuals here in the Fairline Hill Estate. Built personally for them and their hopeful post-apocalyptic future. And uh, yeah, it's actually quite a nice looking vault on the inside. And uh, as we come in from the entrance, immediately on our left, which Dogmeat appears to have just opened for us, is sort of, I guess, their uh, readiness supplies for going out into the wasteland. We have some hazmat suits and a number of ammo boxes filled with, well, different kinds of ammo and some lovely, useful laser pistols. Now, staying on this first floor, I guess is what you'd say for it, we can head over here and on the back left is a little med bay, which is quite cool, including a uh, large open window to nothingness and, you know, all the dirt that they had to excavate for this place. And as you can see, we have a lot of ammunition, first aid kits, etc., and a, just a lot of great loot in here. There is also a locked medical terminal, but... But it doesn't actually have anything on it. When you do unlock the terminal, there it's it's just blank. There, there's nothing. Hopefully, maybe there's going to be something there in the future for additional lore. But for the time being, at least, it's empty. And if we head to the other side of the hall, we have, I guess, sort of their main supply depot. As you can see here, we have a load of foot lockers, wooden crates, coolers, a whole load of wine, which just makes me happy. And then some lockers over here, and most importantly, a terminal that does have a lot of stuff in it. These are the two people, Marion and Peter, who own this personal little vault, and these have all their journal entries as they're building the vault, why they built it, and it's just great. You have all this wonderful lore as to why this place is here, going back over a year before the end of it all. And it's pretty cool. Well, at least for Marion, Peter only has one singular journal entry, so there's that. And uh, besides this lovely room in here, we then have the back room, which is the work room, where we have a lovely motorcycle, which I, uh, I wish I could drive outside. A load of workbenches, a lot of various materials like screws, springs, steel, etc. for you to pick up, and of course a power armor station to use, and your own personal firing range, which is just 
awesome. I love the idea of this here. And of course, you got some uh, guns and ammo here for your shooting practice, which is pretty nice. Now, heading back out to the main hall of the first floor, we then have a stairwell heading down. And if we go here and take a right, the first room we have is the kitchen for this lovely little vault, which comes equipped with quite a few bits of food and drink. Sadly, no crafting table in here for a, you know, a cooking station. Uh, a lot of these sorts of mods, you tend to see the stove being one, but that is not the case in here. Uh, you do have a sink you can drink from, but other than that, uh, you've just got, you know, fun loot, and that is all. Well, and a jukebox, which is always fun to have. Now, heading back and sort of following the right-hand wall, we have this door here, which is the laundry room and well that's an important thing in the post-apocalypse gotta keep your clothes clean now on the opposite side we open this up and we have uh, the bathroom here including a mirror full of bobby pins a toilet that's non-functional a sink that's non-functional and a shower that is also non-functional but hey it all looks good and then continuing to follow along the right hand side we have a lovely bookshelf here with a number of technical documents and, of course, little robot parts models, and continuing on here to the office, which, you know, we've got a lovely desk with a copy of Tesla Science here, a lovely CB radio, a number of storage containers, a lovely lounge, which is very nice, a beautiful window, I do always like these in vaults, and a terminal computer here, which has all the same information on it as the terminal up in the supply room. It is just journal entries for the two characters that own this place and yeah just a, a nice little lounge slash office now across the way is I guess what they were planning for the future it was just the two of them down here but they were hoping perhaps to have a child so they did start to build a kids room here though a kids room with ammunition and a number of other useful storage containers and then, of course, we continue on to the very last room here. It is the bedroom, where we do have a lovely bed, a number of pieces of clothing, and, of course, a number of storage containers for you to use. Some with, uh, you know, nice weapons inside, ammunition, and such. Very fun. And uh, overall, very nice looking. Now, it isn't entirely pristine. You do see a little bits of wear around the place. As uh, if you do read through those lore entries, which again, I love about this mod. It's just so cool to have all that lore here. They were actually living in this thing while they were, you know, getting it all set up. And it just so happened that on the day the bombs fell, sadly for the two of them, they had left the vault to run errands and that is why the vault has been closed since and is now free for you to use and it is just a lovely little player home i do very much enjoy it now unfortunately we do not have a workshop mode for this place so you can't really customize it but it is just a nice, lovely place for you to come down, you know, store your goods, do some building and crafting, get a little uh, target practice in because, hey, who doesn't like that? And, you know, have a nice rest. So overall, a very nice little player home, I think. Small, but very useful. And so if you'd like to check out this mod for yourself, which I would definitely recommend you go and do, you can take a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that is going to be it for today, my friends. I hope you all have enjoyed. And of course, you do come back for the next episode when hopefully we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one.